welcome back everybody thanks for checking out the channel and today we have a very interesting overview because i'm not used to overviewing my own products today we're going to talk about the giga dude 25 a 25 foot carbon fiber mast and this idea all came out over the last year my hope is that i could do multiple different carbon fiber masses and multiple sides from the kilo dude which would be the smallest all the way up to the terra dude which would be the largest but today we do need to talk about the 25 foot carbon fiber mast and why it's not for sale yet to most of the public. Fully extended the GigaDoo 25, which has five sections, is a total of 25 feet tall. I've measured a few of these units and they all come out to right at 25 feet. When it's fully collapsed, as you can see, it's fairly tall at 69 inches. There are five different sections and each of those sections has a clamping mechanism that holds into place the section above it. So for example, if I were to take the bottom section off and extend out, I could then clamp this into place. As you could see, it actually is pretty strong and it's not twisting. Now you could loosen this knob here and if you were then to clamp it, it may move around. So there is a nice happy medium where it's not too tight because if it goes too tight, if it goes too tight, the potential there is to pry down on it and then you might actually break this clip off and that is a fair warning however there is a nice happy medium again where it doesn't move so forth now as you extend this out one of the things you're going to notice is each section is carbon fiber and one side if you're going down is smooth and if you bring it up there is a textured side to it so just kind of keep that in mind i like to wipe each one of these down as i'm inspecting them just to make sure that there's no obvious flaws, no cracks or anything along those lines. As you saw in the intro, I went ahead and I started to make and design all these different toppers for the top of the carbon fiber mast. And the theory goes like this. Each of these are printed in PA-12 and they're available individually from the mast itself, okay? And what happens is, is yeah, there's a little bit of tape around here. It's a sticky on one side and a grip tape on the other side. So you could place that in there and it gives a little bit of traction to the actual PA-12 topper. And then we should be able just to close the top again if it's too tight. Just loosen it up a little bit, don't force it. And then there you go. Now, what are these toppers good for? Well, this is where it gets really fun for me because I get to design stuff. I get to play around with stuff. And originally we created a topper and I say we because it was a collaboration effort a topper that kind of looked like this okay and what it was was basically two holes on here and you would jump this wire across and you can make a dipole for something like a hamstick so a hamstick would go on one end and the other end and then you had your so239 that came down for your coax cable we started to realize something though if you took and put a hole in the middle you now have the ability to do many many other things for example For example, this is the ground spike or the dude spike that I made part of it at least about a year ago. And if you were to put this here, right now it wouldn't make too much difference. You would just have an extra space for something like a, maybe guy wire support, right? So you put a bolt through, you have one of these on each side, now you have guy wire support. But if I were to redesign this just slightly, I could have it when it bolts in facing the opposite way. So now all of a sudden you could have two dipoles on here, two hamster dipoles, one for 40 meters and one for 20 meters or uh, for 10 meters and so forth. Basically, it adds an extra band to your hamstick dipole. I started to continue to think about things and I actually ended up designing this flat piece that would go on top. Now, it's gonna be hard to tell, but the flat piece is right here and then this and this and it goes straight across. And as you could see, you could add things onto the top. Like for example, right now I'm playing around with the idea of a moxin top. So I designed this and I'm gonna need to redesign it, but basically I would have fiberglass rods that come out and a light wire that would go around to each of those fiberglass rods for hopefully a moxin in the future. But I could take this off and then I could mount a camera on the top of here as well. One second. Here you go. This is the topper that I was talking about that bolted onto here and this is a camera mount. So I have taken my camera 25 feet in the air to snap videos and photos, uh, which I'll show some video right here regarding that. But also if you think about it, 
you could easily take this top piece off and actually all these pieces kind of become a platform for building off of the carbon fiber mast or for example if you just had this one you could use this for guy wire support maybe even drill another hole it's pa12 it's pretty pretty strong it's not impossible to break however uh, you could easily just drill another hole here to mount a dipole or to, to hook something in and then use these for guy support which i think is pretty a neat concept i like the camera thing two cameras you know maybe pointing different directions for a cool morning sunrise or something along those lines kind of already spoke about this one and this is the original prototype where there's no hole through here however uh, you know you could take a look at this one which is broke and i want to tell you why it's broke because i did mention these are very strong but they're not indestructible so we talk about guying earlier for example using this to guy down your carbon fiber mast at the top and well if you don't guy it and it gets too windy and you don't have anything supporting the bottom of the mast, it's gonna take a good fall. So for example, I had it in here. This is a rollover flagpole mount, and I rolled it over with a picnic bench, but as the wind came and it was blowing it around, yeah, the grass is soft surface, so this slid out from under the picnic bench and the whole mast fell. I think that probably tells you a little bit about how durable the mast is. It's taken multiple falls and it's been okay, but I did lose that center piece there. And the reason that the mast fell was I was using very heavy antennas, a coiled dipole, uh, the JPC7 antenna, you know, so you have these extension pieces and then you have a coil and then you have your telescoping antenna on each side. And that adds a lot of heaviness on both sides. As the wind picks up, if you're not guided down, what's going to happen? It's going to sway more. That swaying, it was like a pendulum effect, right? And eventually this fell. But like I said, the mast has been durable. I have dropped it intentionally about three times and then unintentionally I had that one fall with the antennas on top. I lost the topper, but not the mast, which I think is probably the good key right there. We know that we could use this for guying. It would just easily put, actually just put a piece of 550 cord through here. What's typically recommended is you guy toward the bottom and then every 25 feet. So at 25 feet at a 25 degree angle, if I could find the article, I'll definitely link it for you. Maybe this isn't the way you want a guy. Maybe, maybe this isn't the way you want a guy because these parts are expensive. Maybe all you're gonna wanna do is just 3D print a guy support. So I did design this little 3D printed uh, guy support and it's supposed to go on the top section of the mast and then you have your three holes for your guy support. I still gotta test it, see how strong and durable it is, but off of hand, you know, I think it will withhold. I could probably break it at some point, but I think it's gonna be okay for guy support, right? This mast is only three point, no. The mast is actually only 2.8 pounds. Okay, so 2.8 pounds is not a lot. Even with the swaying, this should hold up pretty well. A few months ago, I got a batch of these in and I was testing them out, trying to see how durable they might be, doing things like the drop test, you know, at, at six feet, doing things like the drop test at 25 feet. And I decided to send a small amount out to a small group of people, a control, if you will. And I've seemed to get okay feedback with that control. So I am now at this point where the Gigadoo 25 is available for beta testers. Beta testers received a significant discount. In fact, they're basically paying costs from me in order to get one of these and test it out or report back to me any problems. And then what will happen is provided everything seems to be okay and I don't get anything severely wrong feedback wise, it'll go to the public. I originally ordered 50 of these. That's a lot of money and a lot of investment, but also unfortunately due to the supply chain, I think it would be called, I only received 25. The good thing is, is I did a small beta test. So I have enough for the beta testers and I have enough extra in case anything happens to one or parts need to be replaced. Cause you got to plan on that thing. How strong is this and why do I think these will be okay for people? Well, I rate them at 30, 30 pounds weight max. However, I just wanna kinda of show you a couple of things today. 
This is the top section of the mast, and I'm just gonna wipe it down real quick, as sometimes when they come from the factory, there's every now and then a little carbon fiber or splinter that's laying around, and I don't wanna hurt myself. More importantly, I don't want you to get a splinter. Anyway, we got this wiped down, and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my hand, I'm gonna put it around the mast, okay? I'm gonna grab my arm, I'm gonna grab my arm with it, and then with the hand with my military tattoo on it, I'm going to apply pressure down on the mast. And what I'm trying to do, and I can feel that the back of the mast is actually popping up, right? So I need to put some weight back there. I'm applying as much pressure, counter pressure, as I can right now to the mast. And the thing is not budging, okay? I don't know how else I could show you. Now obviously there's some shock to my truck and it's taking some My point is, is it's strong enough for 30 pound rating. In fact, I extended this out and put it in between two trucks and I sat on the rear section and I didn't have any problems with it. Maybe a little bend, but it definitely didn't break. One of the funnest things for me has been the opportunity to get to test this stuff out. I wanna make a couple more notes real quick. The mast here, doesn't matter whether you open this bottom part, if you loosen this all the way, these mast sections aren't going to come out unless you take the whole clamp section off. A couple of things I wanted to point out here, and Chuck came out to supervise. Each section has one of these clamps that I mentioned. If you want to remove a clamp or like a whole section, you will have to remove the clamp for the section. So for example, on the top section, I would remove this one. And then I would also need to remove the one below it, as you can see right here. There's no indication here of when this mast is gonna come out because this mast is not going to come out. It will lock in place. And the only way to bring the mast out is to put it down, down, down after the clamps come off and then they'll come out the bottom portion of the actual mast. And I think that's important to mention. So they're very secure in there as well. We're gonna go ahead and try to do a th few things. Like let's take a video of me dropping this a couple of times at 25 feet. Hopefully we don't scare him too much. A few things I should probably also point out is how to guide this thing. And there are multiple ways to guide it. I like to use the rollover mast method that I mentioned earlier. There are some tripods out there in the market, which I haven't tried yet. So I don't know necessarily if they'll fit, but if the diameter is larger than 39 millimeters, you should be okay. This one is pretty interesting. Let me show you the concept of it. And basically you have three sections on this mass support. I got it from DX Engineering, by the way. And on these three sections, you can take them off, they unscrew, and then you put them together in a triangular formation on the mast on whatever section you like. I like the concept of that because it also does have spots for guy support. This is something I would probably recommend for you and it's pretty portable in that solution in that sense. However, this one is also an interesting concept. It's got these little eyelets for the guy wire support, but you can see the difference here is each of these bolts will screw in and kind of nick against the carbon fiber mast. I suppose if you were gonna do that, just find a way to protect the carbon fiber, right? Not that it necessarily needs to be protected, but it is nice to protect your investment. Maybe a solution is to use that skateboard grip tape that I've showed earlier and put it around where the mast is gonna hit these. Then you also have a good gauge on where you're putting it every time so it's in the same spot. So you got a tripod, you got these. Some of these people that have been testing these out now for a little bit of time have been putting them against their house. And what they're using is a little bit of like a W or a U bracket that you might see on a dish network mast. And they're putting that against the house, drilling it in, and it holds the mast in place. Now, I will mention that most of these people who have done the preliminary testing have only been using wire dipoles. I've went out and I've tested the coil dipoles and it's been fine. You could get away with 20 meter half wave dipole that's telescoping for portable use. But here's the problem with that. You put a lot of stress on the antennas and they're gonna bend Eventually those antennas are gonna break, especially when you get a good wind. The first thing that's gonna start flopping around is gonna be the mast and the antennas, and the antennas are gonna eventually pop out of the section before them. So I, I do like the method of the dipoles for hamsticks, 
the wire dipole, an NFED half wave I've used, that's been fine, of course. The cool thing is, is I now have ability to make a bunch of different antennas. For example, if I got that flat piece, I could probably put a 102 inch whip on there and I could run a wire down from that 102 inch whip, making it, see, 25 feet plus 102 inches or eight feet. Should be right around 33 feet, which would be 40 meters. <laughs> So that's something I might try in the future, but it also gives me the opportunity to see how bad carbon fiber interacts with antennas because we've all heard that carbon fibers and antennas don't really mix. I will tell you that in my testing with the multiple dipoles with the NFED half waves, I haven't had any kind of problem with that. But as I did mention a second ago, we're gonna try to drop this. Before I drop this, I'm gonna bring my dog over here. Come here, Chuck. You're such a good boy. That way he don't get too scared, right? To show you how much this might sway up top if you don't guy it down. Come here, bud. That's a good boy, come here. That's it. We're gonna drop that, okay? That's it, huh? I will caution you also that if you're doing any kind of antenna work, putting up a mast like this, Make sure there's no power lines around. Make sure you're in a secure and safe area. Safety is your concern. And do your due diligence to make sure you're being safe. My lawyer told me to say that. Anyway, you can see I just dropped this at 25 feet. So let's take a look at it. I did get some scratches on here, but actually we use a rag and I think those will come off. I think that's actually just concrete that transferred to this. What I'm looking for is any kind of cracks in any of the clamps or the actual carbon fiber itself. But I think as we saw earlier, this should be okay. See some of that white up here? And again, it kind of comes off, so it's probably just concrete transfer. Let me get a rag, I'll be right back. I'm just going to wipe this down again. And even though it took a fall, those white marks are coming off. My guess is, is they, were, <laughs> they were just concrete transfer. So that's cool. And this is probably a good method with just water, sometimes maybe soap and water, to wipe this down if you're going to clean it. I will caution you that if you're going to use this in the sandy environment, sand might get in there and it might be kind of difficult to clean. At that point, you might need to take apart the sections, fully disassemble it and clean it. Let's go back to this spot right here and just see if we can't. Yep. Wiped right off. Well, there's a couple of marks. He wants to hang out in the shade and that's what we're going to do. But anyway, you know, like I mentioned, you could easily just use this guy wire support, put it in here and put it in between the clamp portion. It may be a little loose. We could always reprint one of these to be smaller. Uh, or as I kind of intended this to do, you take the clamp portion off the actual, the, the C clamp, and then you put this down on the mast. Then you put the C clamp back on and then your topper up here. I'm really excited for this. This is kind of a cool little concept. I've been testing this and I haven't had any problems that I'm aware of. Nobody's reported any problems to me. So that's the Giga Dude. I'm pretty excited about it. And if it does well, like I said, I want to do the Kilo Dude, a smaller fiberglass mast, all the way up to the Terra Dude, the largest carbon fiber mast in the world. That's about, that's about everything I have for the, the Giga Dude that I could think of now. I've recorded this episode over four days, and the first four days were 30 minutes each episode. So I said, forget it, let's go ahead and try this again. I think this is a better overview of the actual mast. Other things you might be able to do with it is wash your windows, jousting, pole vaulting, throwing a wire into a tree. And actually that's a pretty good one. Put the wire into the tree, put a wire into a tree on the other side, and then in the middle you have the mast so you're at a straight dipole at 25 feet. But that's no fun. You could play 25 foot billiards. Social distancing. Supporting your local content creator who's <laughs> doing his best. <laughs> hey, until next time, I hope this was a decent video, gave you a better understanding of what the Giga Dude is. Hopefully we'll see that Kilo Dude, that Terra Dude, and all the things in between. And hopefully this leads to more product.
But in order to get more product, I need to make sure that this is going to be a good quality product before we continue. It'll be ready when it's ready. Take care and thank you for watching the channel.